Hello, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages. It is me, Duke CT. Feeling a bit under the weather, but I'm still here, live on the Duke CT Lounge. And boys and girls, what a freaking week we've had. Oh, goodness gracious, what a long <coughs> and just crazy week we've had. Ah, oh, goodness gracious. And you know what? This cold I'm having right now will not stop me from talking about this because, whoo boy, this, there's a lot of stuff here um, that is, um, um, you, know, you know, there's a lot of stuff in this whole Spider-Man controversy. And, well, Spider-Man, Sony, Disney, there's a whole lot of stuff going on. And first things first is that it seems that there was a bit of a rift of Sony and um, Disney um, basically uh, saying, um, we don't want Spider-Man in the MCU anymore. And believe you me, this brought out the calm and rational things over Twitter and Facebook, Instagram, and everything else in between. It was a... Uh, the short version, it was just, uh, well, a lot of people were begging for Spider-Man to, you know, want to get Spider-Man back, and that could be people blaming Sony, people blaming Disney, a lot of stuff happened, and, you know, where I fall in that camp, I know it pissed me off, I find, you know, a lot of this stuff straight down the middle, but I lean more, funny enough, a bit with Sony, because <coughs> right now, they have at least some of the, the most of the power here, because... Disney's not looking so good. And I'll get to that why. Before we get into it, um, uh, we have to get to the uh, beginning. Is that Disney has been, you know, looking for, um, you know, they're going to extend this partnership between the MCU, Spider-Man and the MCU. Which is fine. A lot of people were like, hey, you know, after Father Home got over a billion dollars. And they're saying, hey, you know what? We're going to like this. We're going to give you another deal. But Sony's like, you know, this Venom, which made over $800 million. Um, and the Into the Spider-Verse, that, that not only has um, made its money back, wasn't a billion-dollar hit. Which, let's be honest, most of the reason why it was a billion-dollar hit was because it was attached to the MCU. But Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse... Um, a lot of people said that was the most, the, probably the best version of Spider-Man we was already seen, and introduced Miles Morales was a lot of people who have been waiting for, and you know feel like the MCU is just stifled on that. They just feel like it just doesn't really, they feel ignored by that. And heck, when they people talk to when I look at Into the Spider Verse, I wasn't, you know, me, um, you know, I was just like, what. That was to me just one of the most, uh, to me probably the best movies I seen last year and an Oscar that was well well deserved, well deserved. So I cannot um, just um, <clears throat> you know I cannot just uh, uh, just uh, you know uh, uh, say that oh this this uh, this thing is. Uh, you know, uh, you know, Spider Verse doesn't mean anything. It does, and it, you know, just because it doesn't make a billion dollars does not mean it's a bomb or just you look know, at the financial stuff and the business. But yeah, you know, that sort of thing. They're like, you know, critical acclaim and that sort of thing. And maybe, just maybe, um, I would like to see more of that. I mean, heck, you know, and and also Tom Rothman. This is again, he's not the first time. Uh, he asked for comic movies. He had a Fox where he refused to make a Deadpool movie. And all the stuff that happened to him in X-Men Origins Wolverine just was a complete dumpster fire and basically damaged the Wolverine brand. It's, you know, damaged the X-Men brand and pretty much started that stuff there. And that's a lot of people say, hey, are you fine? So are you for him? Not really. I'm not for Tom Rothman. Uh, I think he is just, uh, ugh. you know, I think he, again, he, he's good at some things. But comic book movies, he is not good at. To me, I, I honestly think hopefully 
Philip, uh, you know, Lord and Miller, I think those two should really just. If I was, you know, I would not keep Amy Pascal because she, she has not done well with the fantasy genre, and such. I think that she should just, you know, just, you know, go away personally and just have fun. Like Lord Miller be the caretakers of the Spider-Man franchise and such. I think that would be probably the best way to go. Uh, I think that would be the best way to go for everyone if they really wanted to uh, put that in role there. And not only that, I think that... <coughs> Again, sorry. I'm just not really feeling well. I'm, I'm, I'm going to make it through. I'm going to pull through. Um, you have, again, um, Sony... And some cough medicine. Um, Sony, who pretty much uh, is, uh, you know, again, pressing the advantage because Disney right now is not looking so good. Disney, who is... Um, you know, they didn't really like the fact that the whole, um, they're not doing well after the Fox, you know, they feel like most of the Fox films didn't do so well this past year, um, and, and such, and not only that, with, uh, with everything else, but the big news, which, funny enough, came out, uh, today, actually, um, this morning, is that Disney, a whistleblower told SEC, SEC, the company inflated revenue for years. Yeah, this um, they've been cooking the books, <coughs> and and now, um, you know when you hear this story and and you have Spider Man getting pulled from the MCU, and if you have Star Wars, a lot of people are not liking Star Wars. The kids don't like Star Wars. They love the Marvel stuff, but the kids don't like Star Wars anymore. Disney's been is not in the best place of mind right now. Um, go back into the story here. Well, the, the, the Disney is this, um, <coughs> Sandra Kuba, a formerly a senior financial uh, an analyst, financial analyst in Disney's revenue operations department who worked for the company 18 years, alleges that employees working in the parks and resorts business segment systematically overstated the revenue by billions of dollars by exploiting the weakness in the uh, company accounting software. And when you look at these stuff, uh, you look more and more into it. Like, you know, if this, if this, you know, these news stories are not good for, um, you know, Spider-Man and, you know, like not for that people, not good for Disney. I mean, to keep Spider-Man. And so, take, you know, so they might see, hey, you know, we might just pull him back. But I also, at the end of the day, it's just, uh, personally, I think this is all, all just one big, um, uh, hollabaloo. To pretty much get Sony what they want. Like, you know, like, hey, you know what? Y'all not looking too good. Y'all not looking so well with all this other stuff coming out. You know, could companies, uh, revenue, your Star Wars IP not looking so hot. You might need the money. So we're going to, like, say, hey, how about this? We'll give you probably, and, you know, I wouldn't be surprised if this thing supposedly comes down to say hey we'll give you 25 to 30 percent with this character and such but also of uh, the uh, you know merchandise and all the other stuff but also we will give you you know you will come to us like you're gonna put our venom in the SC, uh, in the uh, MCU our Mobius in the MCU our Craven our this and that we will want to have a lot more power and a lot more say with Kevin, you know, Kevin Feige here, but also other people are going to have a lot more say in the Spider-Man MCU experiment. So, I think by the end of this week, we will have a new deal. Sony will be like, okay, everything's all good. We're making the sequel to Spider-Man Far From Home, but also Venom 2 is going to be in the MCU. They're going to shoehorn Venom into the MCU. Uh, that's going to be the big news. And that's what I see coming. That's what I see happening. I just don't see anyone, uh, anywhere else that I would not be surprised. And that it's going to be there. And, you know, that, um, you know, and Sony will still keep their pro you know, keep their stuff. And, you know, Disney will have their uh, main figure, which is pretty much Spider-Man. You know, Spider-Man is now going to be their top dog because, well, <coughs> Captain America's out. And Iron Man's out. 
Those two uh, big characters are out. Which is funny enough, these two uh, characters and such were pretty much relatively unknown until the MCU made them something great. Which is hilarious because the MCU pretty much made great characters, you know, and money making characters on their own without the use of Spider Man, X Men, or Fantastic Four. That to me shows um, really just, you know, again, the, you know, the craftiness and the you know, caretaking of the MCU. Personally, it's something very interesting, though. It's kind of funny, and I, um, you know, it's, you know, I've been retreated about this whole thing, about, and it's still been retreated and liked and everything else. Um, you know, um, you know, funny, um, uh, someone who followed me, I'll put the, you know, a link here, said, um, fun fact, it says, um, right here, Twitter says, fun fact, under the copyright laws we used it in, until 1978, Spider-Man would have entered the public domain in January, January of this year. Guess who messed with the copyright laws um, and such? You know, guess who did that? Oh, Disney. Hmm. And you know, it's funny. And, you know, uh, the response is one of my, you know, interesting colleagues, um, Ozzy Arcane. Uh, you know, he goes by uh, Gabriel of Oz. He says, um... So he's like, response like, so you're saying Disney's tampering with the copyright law is the reason they can't use Spider-Man without partnering with Sony. That's beautiful. <laughs> oh, gosh. It's just, uh, that, that's hilarious, you know. That is, public domain, you know. It's funny how this, all this thing could have, it could have been solved if Disney didn't tamper with this stuff. A lot of this stuff would not have been, um, you know, a lot of people would have, you know, wouldn't have mind because a lot of this stuff would have been, on the public domain, you can make story. people like, oh, we have a billion spider Man. like, we got a billion version of um, stories now and such. It's not a big deal. People, there's a lot of crap out there. But the good stuff, the great stuff will always rise above the top. I mean, sure, we probably have a, like a crappy run, uh, Robin Hood or Sherlock Holmes once in a while. But again, there are going to be some really good Sherlock Holmes and some like a variation of that Sherlock Holmes or Robert Hood or you know any other characters that hit the the whole the public domain they're probably you know doing something right now in some other country or some other TV show or whatever that sort of thing so <coughs> why my whole wrap thing up is if Disney didn't screw up with the whole uh, copyright stuff back in the day we wouldn't be in the situation but yeah I think this thing is gonna get done. I guarantee you it's going to get done by, heck, by the end I put this video up, after I just, uh, after this podcast, I'm going to knock myself out, I'm going to go to sleep, but, uh, but yeah, by the time the podcast gets up and such, I will not be surprised that Sony and Disney will have this thing come out, they will just play it like, hey, hey, come on now, come on, man, we just been working here, come on, come on, dog, we're just here working, trust me. You know, um, that sort of thing. It, that That's just going to be the truth. That's what's going to happen. Um, you know, I, I would not be surprised. I would not be surprised that Spider-Man will come back and Spider-Man and will be back in the MCU. They're going to make all this stuff up, and they're going to probably put more of the, uh, the stuff that's outside the MCU. They're going to put that in there. I don't know how, but they're going to do it. Yeah, Kevin Feige is going to be a lot more work. He's going to put in that. Uh, yeah, he's going to put a lot more work in that. <coughs> but, you know, that's my personal thing. Anyway, we're going to take a small break here. And we'll be right back as we talk about some other, um, other, um, you know, the big news in the uh, entertainment medium is that WWE is going to be putting NXT on the USA Network Wednesday nights at 8 p.m. We're going to be talking about that right after this here live on the, on the Duke CT Lounge. Live on Talk Show, we'll be uh, right back, right after this. And man, I am out of it. I'm hopefully, um, 
you know, I was edit most of the stuff out and such, but man, <sighs> don't to self, don't do sick, don't be sick and try to do live stream, uh, don't do a uh, podcast, it's just it's not good luck, <laughs> but yeah, here I am, I, I'm here, uh, uh, I am here. If you can tell I'm loopy, as you know, you, the the medicate the medicine is uh, kicking in. So yeah, we're gonna be uh, right back right after this here live on the Duke Tino Lounge. Thank you so much for listening to me here on TalkShoe.com. We'll be right back right after this.